This is the shame video. Mm -hmm. <gasps> I'm ashamed. No, yeah, it looks like I'm drinking out of here now. <laughs> Just trashing it <laughs> up. <laughs> it's <Whatever>. all over me. <laughs> Hello, booktube. Sometimes we don't like to read popular books. They're just too cliche. They're all the same. Mm. They don't truly capture the darkness and sadness of the human spirit. Of dribbling wine down your chin. Yes. Well, I'm trying to be very serious. So today we're going to talk about popular books I haven't read. But I have. And popular books that I haven't read. But I have. We'll start with a book that I haven't read. Good, we'll start with your shame. We both have shame here. Mm -hmm. We'll start with a book that I haven't read, which I think is very popular right now, and that is Ready Player One. <laughs> You'd think I would have read this book. This seems like a book that I would read. It, and yeah. the reason I included it is because it's a book that I would like to read. This book seems very polarizing. There are people who passionately hate this book and then people who really really love it it is very much a male power fantasy and i will admit to that but it's fucking fun and that's why i liked it and then there are people who complain that it's just too many pop culture references it's literally the yeah. plot of the book yeah that's so, <laughs> that much i know yeah and there will be people watching this who are like yes definitely read that and other people are like that book's trash why are you even including it so next we'll talk about a book that you haven't read I've read all the books, I don't know what you're talking about. You haven't read a classic, and that is Frankenstein. I've never read Frankenstein. Even in school? Like, never? We didn't have to read Frankenstein. Really? I think maybe we had to read a piece of Frankenstein in school. You know, when they would take like chapters of a book and put it in your English textbook or something like that. So I definitely read pieces of Frankenstein. I feel like I may have lied about reading this when I was younger because I, like, con I considered myself very mm. horror. I still consider myself a horror fan. Yeah. I'm woman enough to admit now that I haven't read Frankenstein. Well, this to me is very uh, horror, but also sci-fi. Many consider this very book the birth of modern science fiction. Written by a woman. Written by a woman. Have you ever heard of the origin story of how this book was written? It was, do you know who Lord Byron is? Yes. So Lord Byron used to have these crazy, totally lit parties. Everyone would come to his house and have orgies, and then they'd write books together. He was Why don't we do that anymore? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so it was Lord Byron, some other guy, Percy Bicey Shelley, who is Mary Shelley's husband, mm -hmm. and Mary Shelley. I don't know who the last guy was. Man, this is a real wiener fest. It was. I'm pretty sure there was another woman there, too. But either way, they all decided that they were going to write scary stories mm -hmm. and it was one of those classic like come up with the spooky story and mary shelley was toiling over hers and everyone else had these like fun stories and she was like guys i can't think of anything and then the next bit is kind of rumor i don't know if that's true and that is that she woke up in the middle of the night possibly to lord byron hovering over her bed in the middle of the night i don't know how much of that that could be true that could again remember probably an orgy filled like crazy week but they say that she like woke up to this like imposing looming figure and that was spooky and that inspired her to write this book frankenstein and that was her scary story and she took much longer than everyone else but clearly it was for a good reason because instead of just writing a spooky ghost story she invented science fiction just you know over the weekend yeah <laughs> just during a crazy kind of raucous orgy party like just in invent a new genre just invent science fiction god yeah. i will never be this fucking cool lord byron was like a rock star we have to befriend a rock star and then have orgies with them mm. just at their par at their parties maybe it's like i like the idea of an orgy in theory but i feel it like i wouldn't enjoy yeah. it at the time <laughs> 
I would be the person going in the other room and inventing science fiction. <laughs> Next book you haven't read, let's shame you some more. Because Frankenstein is way more shameful than Ready Player One. The next one I haven't read, I think is still pretty shameful. This might be the most shameful one to me on my list. And that is A Clockwork Orange. Oh. I've not read A Clockwork Orange. I have seen the movie. I've read about the book. I know details about the book, so I'd like to read the book. So it's on my TBR at some point. I want to reread it. I read it in high school. I, it was my first real pull away from the young adult children's books, I think, was a clock. I mean, that's a bit of a disconnect. That's yeah. a bit of a step away. At the time, I was reading a lot of Harry Potter and things similar, I guess. I'm not sure when I started Stephen King, though. But Clockwork Orange was really like, I had never gotten anything remotely close to that. And I think it made me want to write more. I credit Harry Potter for making me originally wanting to write, started writing fan fiction. I credit A Clockwork Orange for making me wanting to take it seriously. So back to you. I think one that I'm pretty disappointed you haven't read, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I saw Hitchhiker's Guide uh. to the Galaxy. <laughs> it was fun. I actually started Hitchhiker's Guide a year ago and I actually like had trouble getting into it and I don't think it was because I didn't like it I just wasn't there mentally. It's definitely my thing. It's yeah funny and it's, it's funny It's weird, weird. It's out there and it's got such lovely things to say about life. Back to books I haven't read. Another book I haven't read I do read a lot of classics and that's more what we've been talking about but a more modern book that I think is pretty up my alley but I still haven't read The Martian. The Martian has been talked about a lot. It was made into a movie. I didn't see the movie. I didn't oh. read the book. The book and the movie are yeah. fantastic. I really thoroughly enjoyed them. It totally seemed like something that I would enjoy. I was surprised by how quickly I got through that book and I was surprised at how funny it was. I didn't know anything about it really. Um, that's not as high up on my list as some of these others, but mm. it's one that I think I should read. Back to you. The last one that we have on the list of books you haven't read is another classic. You're not doing well with the classics. Listen! I'm just going to say 1984. I've never read 1984. Most people read it in school. I didn't read it in school, No, actually. you still just read it. You were so cool. But I was, too, I was so cool <laughs> that I read it anyway. I want you to read this book because I do have some unpopular opinions about this book. Mm -hmm. Did you like Brave New World, by the way? I, feel like I they don't get... know. I haven't read that. <gasps> Add it to my list. Oh, so you should read Brave New World and I should read 1984. And then we'll have a dystopia. Yes. I'll read Brave New World. Maybe we'll have a, we'll have a dystopia day. Yeah, dystopia day. It's kind of almost, it's kind of almost the end of the world anyway. Yeah. And lastly, for me, I haven't read Game of Thrones. I haven't done it. And honestly, of all the books on my list that I haven't read, I don't want to read this. I don't blame you. I read this one only. What's really interesting to me about Game of Thrones, plenty of readers read this series, but most of the people I know who love this series and try to get me to read it are people who don't read very much. Yeah. Isn't that weird? And I just hear that from a lot of people. They're like, I, I That doesn't this. make me want to read a book. Me neither. It's like... <laughs> I don't know anything about this, but take my advice. Um, like, but I mean, a lot of a lot of readers do like this series. I just don't. I can't. I ended. I did like this. I read the first one, and I did end up enjoying it. Once I got to a certain point, I devoured it. Mm -hmm. But I just could not get into the rest. There's too many point of views, and when it's the show and you don't care about a character, you can kind of like zone out for a second, and then that character story will end, and they'll go to someone you give a shit about. Very different when you're reading. Yes. It. But I've tried to read this. I've started it a number of times. I'm always just like snooze. I don't know. It's just not for me. It, the language isn't for me. It's the storyline is not for me. I also don't really like historical style fiction and this is kind of done in that style. What I will say, for those of you who don't know, George R. R. Martin wrote the 1980s television show Beauty and the Beast with Ron Perlman. And that's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, George R. R. Martin, for that time in the 80s when you made a, he a hero that was great. How did you know that? It's in the fucking opening credits of every episode. It's a retelling. Oh. It's a New York businesswoman who falls in love with, like, a lion man who lives in the sewers. Oh, 
okay. I feel like I remember seeing this cover on like things. You've before. probably seen it. It's like Ron Perlman in lion makeup yes. with like weird Renaissance clothes. I don't know. There's just the story is so bizarre and so lovely. I want a sewer lion man story. We should watch we it. We should watch this. Yeah. I'm gonna so, watch it. So I don't know about Game of Thrones, but Beauty and the Beast. It's great. So anyway, those are some pretty popular books that I haven't read. But I have. Or... I haven't read. But I have. Join us next time, BookTube, when we talk about something else. <laughs>